Hi. Welcome back to Whole Lot of Homestead. Here's kind of what we've been up to this week. So, I ordered some broiler chickens. And I kind of wanted to give them more space this time because I ordered a bunch last year and I lost half of them. Still trying to figure out why, but if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So, here's the newest broiler chicken build I've done. This is the broiler house. My little girls decided they wanted their wagon wheels up in the chicken coop. So, this is a 10 by 10 space. And as you can see, once you come inside, it's got good shade. It's not as bright as it is out there. So, the temperature will be easier to regulate with the grow lights. And I will be doing this next week. Not this weekend, but yeah, next week, once they come in, I'm going to do a video series on raising broiler chickens. We'll do a week-by-week -week update so everybody can see, you know, how we do it. Because obviously we have other obstacles to overcome than most, like we're in the desert. And our neighbors have giant horse dogs. So that's kind of what we're going to do. This here is the brooder box we used for him last year. Now, this brooder box is quite a bit smaller. As you can see, it's dinky. I mean, we did 50 meat birds in here last year and we were lucky to have room for them. So I think that was a big mistake. I think ventilation was a problem, so I took care of ventilation on that one. But these are what we're brooding right now. We got 23 Rolino Reds who are starting to get their feathers. So by the time the meat birds get here, they shouldn't need these lights and I can move them over. They're obviously eating well and growing well. They can't fit through all the little holes that I had under it anymore. I did fix that. And right now we're going through our herd seeing who our egg layers are and who aren't because you know when you're homesteading on a budget which we do because yeah bills got to get paid you uh you take a good look at you know everything you got and make sure everything's doing its job to help progress you along the way now i just started this homestead a year ago and in that year, yeah, April, less than a year ago, <coughs> my backyard was completely barren and just kind of taken over by all the kids. They did their thing, I did my thing, whatever, you know, kids will be kids. So since then, I went up to the treehouse, I have turned our backyard into a farm. There you got our chicken coop, our grow out pen for the rabbits, goat pen, goat pen, pig pen, broiler chicken pen, A-frame. And we split the yard in half so that when the goats, um, in the mornings we let them out with our pens. So all my milk and does get the back half of the yard and all my, my buck and my weathers get the front half of the yard. This way we could kind of control their breeding. So yeah, all this was less than a year. And I've lost over a hundred pounds. My uh, liver damage has begun to reverse and it's now starting to heal itself, which is good. Got rid of my diabetes and my high cholesterol, but Still working on the blood pressure with these little brats. I love them. They're helpful when they want to be. But as you saw, we do pigs, goats, chickens, rabbits. That's another one we raised for meat. There's the boy. He came out to help. Get all the goats and pigs watered, son. 
That's your chore. Get it done. So just here's our chicken coop. And this little red-eyed monster. He likes to fight everybody. And there's our turkeys. And in here. Here's our chickens. And then there's our rabbits. We keep them in the chicken coop because the chickens really help clean them up. So, yeah, as you were saying, we got new baby bunnies to take care of. Oh. New baby goats. Well, she's not the newest one. The newest ones are over there. Whiskey and whiskey and something. My wife named them after some country song. So whiskey and brownie. It's not whiskey and brownie. And over here we got our baby pigs. So as you see, we have our pigs. We have one mama in here because those babies were being mean to this mama's babies. So we had to kind of separate them. Let's see if we can get a good shot. Where are they? There they are back there in the corner. So they're sleeping. And that's kind of how we roll. So let's go out front and I'll show you our gardens. Since so I did the gardens again this year. And we got a lot of a lot of growth since I started it. So what I did was a Hugo, Hugo culture bed with my raised beds. So here's the raised beds. We got our carrots, our lettuces, some corn I was experimenting with. They said it grows good, real good with lettuce and some other herbs which are over there. This is our other lettuce patch. I gotta get out here and weed this one. But I have them all hooked to a timer because I don't have time to water as often as I would. I've usually gone for 15 hours a day, but you can see our spinach and our lettuce coming in. My wife's succulents. <coughs> Tried the soil blocks. The kids were not having it. They decided to smash them all. So if you got little kids, don't do soil blocks. Because they will smash them whenever you're not around. And then you'll get angry. And then you'll decide not to do soil blocks anymore. So these are our other beds. This one here, me and my four-year-old just planted today. So we have a beanstalk she did in class. Then my six-year-old did a bean plant. Then all back here I have cucumbers we did today. And a whole bunch of bush beans in here. This one we haven't got ready yet because that's going to be for um, the winter harvest. So we'll put the brassicas and stuff in there. And I got a little bit of time yet. But as you can see we're in the desert. We have the longest growing season that there is because the sun is out frying everything all the time. And then these are our tomatoes. And we decided to do 11 different varieties of tomatoes to see which ones yielded the best out here and did the best. As you can see, I decided to mulch it with lettuce and some other herbs. My daughter's put marigolds around the side to attract bees. But this little guy, I really was surprised by because when we got him, he looked dead. I told my wife, says, I don't know if this one's going to make it. It's looking kind of bad, but this is called a solar fire. It's supposed to be a heat tolerant tomato. So we'll see how heat tolerant it is. Now, all these plants have more than quadrupled in size. Since I got it, except for this guy. This guy is the same size. He has not grown. He has not shrank. He is identically 
the same size. And he is a Sun Sugar Hybrid Yellow Cherry. So we'll see how he does. But everybody else seems to be really doing well. You know, I got a couple peppers in there. And again, all these guys, as you can see by these pipes in the ground, are all linked together into this timer, which is also linked to this box. So if you got if you don't have a whole lot of time like us and you know you want to do this stuff but you know time gets in the way. Work fifteen hours a day. Well you work twelve hours a day and drive three hours back and forth to work. You gotta come up with ways to manage your time and make sure you have the time to do what's important and get done as much as you can so i got these all set up because we're going to be going out to our property this weekend and i might do another video for that it's the future site a whole lot of homestead right back behind that mountain and yes that is a snow cap on there it's still cold up there but we're going to go on the back side this weekend we bought just shy of 50 acres back there and we're going to take our nice little one acre farm hobby farm homestead whatever you want to call it country living you know everybody's got a name for it and we're going to move out there get the house built get the barn built get a shop built and then we will move all of our stuff out there and you know we will really take a better crack at this Raise more animals, you know, come up with some different breeds. Bigger pens for sure. I mean, they are really cramped in there. Three goats and an acre yard by themselves, that's kind of cramped. It's really not, but I think they should have more room. And yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing out here. So if you like this video, if you want to see ways to grow in the desert you know just hit the like button hit the subscribe you know whenever they decide to send notifications to you you'll know as soon as i post a new video so thanks for sharing go check out keeping the dutch check out justin Rhodes, lumna acres living traditions that's all another family from arizona they moved to missouri and took a crack at it um weedham and reap they're in the Phoenix area. They got a lot more heat to deal with than what I do, but you know, hot is hot when you're in the desert and it's over 100. I don't care who you are. So, go ahead and check out some of those other channels. And Ooh, Justin Rhodes, Abundant Permaculture. He has a lot of great ideas for making everything work for you. So, check it out. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and I will check you out on the next video. Thanks.